Your LinkedIn profile is the first impression that you make online. It's your introduction in a professional space like LinkedIn. A standout headshot makes you look credible and approachable, but do you actually really need a photographer or is AI good enough now to actually handle it? So what do you do if you don't have time, budget, or you can just never seem to get a great photo? That's really where AI headshots come in. You send a few photos and let the AI generate new versions of the ones that you've provided. But there are so many options out there, so I've tested the most popular AI headshot tools, and I've now picked the best two that stood out from the rest. Let's see if they can actually deliver professional quality headshots that you would be happy to use for less time, less money, and less effort than a professional photographer. So here are three photos. Tell me which ones are AI and which ones aren't. In this video today, I'm going to answer three key questions that you probably have about AI headshots. Which tool creates the most professional looking headshots for LinkedIn? How much does this cost? And what is the most affordable option for you? And finally, do they actually look realistic enough that you could use them all? And at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the secret formula for the best AI headshots almost every time, including some things to avoid which were mistakes that I made. To pull this video together, I dove in deep. I tested AI headshot generators for days. I spent several hundred dollars and I created over a thousand headshots to see which ones could really give the most professional look on LinkedIn. Today, I'm sharing all of my findings with you as there were some great ones, some bad ones, and some truly just funny ones. I'd never be able to use them on LinkedIn, let alone anywhere, but they're still pretty funny. Oh. And those three photos I showed you at the start, they're all AI. To make this comparison fair, I didn't just stick with one type of source photo because each tool may have really performed better with one type of photo or another. So I threw everything at it. Headshots, selfies, candid shots I've get, had taken of me, even my professional headshots that I use everywhere. Rather than reviewing all of these tools that I found, I just narrowed it down to two. And for these tools, I uploaded a professional set of headshots and a casual set of headshots with one or two just professional ones thrown in, just to give that variety. I then showed them to friends and family and basically asked them to help me sort them into four different categories. Duds, they're ones with artifacts, third arms, two watches, weird fingers, or just doesn't look like me. Decent resembles me at the first glance. Good resembles me after a long look and would probably fool most people. And great looks like me could be used as a photo. And when I send it to people, pretty much everyone is going to think it's real. So I took this approach across the two tools, getting opinions of others. And the results that I got from people was actually not at all what I thought it was going to be. All right. Let's start with Headshots Pro. This tool is quick, it's easy, and there's very little commitment here. You just pay once and you're good. It has three pricing options. The basic plan at $29 for 40 headshots, professional at 39 for 100 headshots, and the executive at $59 for 200 headshots. So no subscriptions, no monthly fees lurking. You pick your plan, you pay once, you get your headshots, you're out, one and done. Super, super easy. The interface is really clean and the process is very simple. It's easy to understand and it gets the job done without distracting you with a million different settings. No fluff, no gimmicks, just upload, select, let it do its thing. But here's what I really liked about Headshots Pro. Like the pricing is actually quite simple. In a world where there are so many subscription tools, this one, you're paying basically to have the job done. You know exactly what you're paying for. The other thing I liked about it is it actually handles glasses really well. And for someone like me, who has seen a photo of me without glasses? No one, because I don't have any, because I can't see without glasses. So every photo needs to have glasses. It actually asks you during the setup if you wear glasses or not. And you can basically just 
go through the settings, set what you want, let it cook for a couple of hours. And uh, they usually say it's about two hours, but I found it was a little bit quicker than that. It's enough time for you to watch my AI coffee video if you haven't seen it already, or one of my others. But here's the catch. You get a set number of photos per plan. And if you want more, you have to go back to the checkout, go through the whole process, new order, new uploads. And the interface could use a couple of little tweaks. One thing to note on this is that I didn't actually get any weird artifacts, extra arms, extra eyes, extra fingers, and all the photos had glasses. Next up is Photo AI, which is absolutely packed full of features and flexibility. You'll get access to thousands of styles, right? Everything from classic business looks, theme shots like Halloween, plus you can also add custom prompts. And there are settings to adjust background, clothes, even mood, right? It is, however, a monthly subscription. So if you plan to keep updating your photos or moods, it could be worth it, but it's obviously not cheap. So in theory, it technically is cheaper per month. It's $19 for 40 photos, but it is a monthly subscription. The option I went for was $39 and they're giving a 50% off sale at the moment. So you can have three models, a thousand photos per month, significantly more headshots than Headshots Pro, which was a hundred headshots for $39. But the real question is, is it actually better? With Photo AI, you do get more variety in your final images. They're not all corporate headshots, but because I had a thousand credits I could use, I actually went and generated all kinds of different styles. I did force it to generate headshots like those LinkedIn style for me to do a fair comparison. But if you're looking for more than just headshots, Photo AI delivers. You can keep tweaking the model, adding new prompts, adding new looks, adding new situations, adjust for details like background, and you can go truly crazy if you want. You can change the camera angle, the type of camera it was taken on, the filters, just everything. The ability to really refine those images actually stands out. If you're looking for a few quick headshots and you don't really want to mess around, it may be overkill. And let's be honest, occasionally you do actually get some weird artifacts. I got a third arm in a Halloween theme, um, but ultimately that could have just been a part of the costume, I guess. So after generating nearly a thousand images across all of the tools, here's how they really performed. Headshots Pro had an overall score of around 49% decent, 18% good, and 18% great, with the remaining 15% being duds. In other words, nearly half the photos it generated were usable, i.e. decent or better. And it did this without any fuss. It was upload, click a few buttons, and it's done. This one is really reliable, but it doesn't stray too far from that original look and it doesn't offer a ton of variety. Photo AI, on the other hand, had a slightly different spread. Overall, 23% were decent, 26 were good, and 33 were great. With only about 18% being duds, right? So this means over 80% of the images were actually usable you get more variety and higher chance of hitting that great category with Photo AI, especially if you're willing to experiment with the prompts and styles. However, it is worth noting here that the results varied significantly depending on the quality of your photos and the time you spend refining those prompts. But does this really tell the full story? Because which one should you use? Because they're both actually pretty great. Where are we sitting now? What, how do these tools stack up? Well, I think to start with, you have to change your mindset here, just like a professional photography session. You only see the best photos kind of after they've edited them. So half of the ones that they take, you'll probably never see. It's the same in AI. That dud percentage are effectively those ones that you just never would see in any other thing. So you should never expect all hundred you generate to be pure bangers, right? So both tools overall give realistic professional results. But Photo AI's customization lets you get really creative, right? If you're willing to refine it and play with the prompts, you can start simple and then add your own touch if you really want something completely unique. Headshots Pro is quicker for a simple one-time session, while Photo AI, like I said, offers that control, that flexibility, and 
over time, I think you'd get used to using the prompts to make really fantastic headshots. Headshots Pro is more affordable if you just wanna do it once. But Photo AI overall seems to be a better product with the number of different photos you can generate. And now that it's got your model, you can use it in so many other situations, way better than you can use with the off-the-shelf mid-journey or ChatGPT or DALI or any of those other models that are free if you have a paid account. It's significantly better. Overall, if I was to sum up how they have a different approach, the way I think about it is accuracy versus precision. Think about like a dartboard. Headshots Pro is precise but it lacks variety. So all of the darts are clustered together, but they're not clustered around the bullseye, they're just offset from the bullseye, right? Which means you get a lot that are close to decent, quite a few hitting good, a couple that hit great, but they still miss that bullseye. Photo AI, on the other hand, is actually at the start far less consistent. Darts all over the board, however, a lot hit the bullseye. So they're not clustered, but as you refine your prompts and you get better and better at it, those using up those thousand credits or so that you've got, not only will you get accurate, you'll also get precise, right? In multiple styles. But before we see the AI headshots, let me know in the comments if you like this style of video. And if you wanna see me cover AI audio clones, AI agents, or even AI avatars, because AI does more than photos, it does video as well. If you're looking for a quick polished headshot without any fuss, Headshots Pro has got you covered. You pay once, you get your images, you're set. But if you're looking to experiment with a, like a big range of different styles and you're trying to use it not just for professional headshots but for other things, and especially if you're doing it for more than one person, photo AI is actually worth the extra. It's really about what you're after. Okay, so here are some of the images I got that were the good ones. I got them from both Photo AI and Headshots Pro. No spoiler on the great ones, I'm gonna show those soon, just hang on. You'll see that both of these tools produced actually so completely solid results. They had a lot of trends and similarities in some of the photos that they made because your input really does matter here. As it tried to put me wearing my vest and my green collared shirt into situations where it just didn't make sense. Here's the real question though. Are these ones truly good enough to be used as a LinkedIn profile or in any other headshot? I'll let you decide first, but before we do that, let's just talk about my top tips to maximize your results, regardless of the tool that you actually use. So what would I actually do? Well, if I had to choose what I would use every single time I needed a new headshot, here's my approach. For a quick polished headshot, minimal fuss, and you've already got some decent photos, Headshot Pro works just fine out of the box. But personally for me, I'm after more variety. I wanna play around with different styles, locations, clothes, um, and I really just wanna use it for more than other headshots. Photo AI's flexibility for that just makes it the one that I'm gonna use. I am going to upgrade my account to a yearly one and get 50% off for a year. And after a year, if I haven't used it as much as I thought, I'll just cancel the account. So if you're in the same boat and you just need a few headshots, Headshot Pro, need more options, or wanna have some fees, grow a third arm, those kinds of things, Photo AI is actually worth it. But to make them both great, you need to get the best results from both of the tools. You need to use quality input photos. So what I suggest you do is find a friend with a new smartphone who takes great photos. Doesn't have to be a professional photographer, just go and buy them breakfast or some food or coffee, right? Find a place with some good lighting, a few, get them to take a few well-lit shots, different locations, different clothes, because the better the input, the better the output. And this goes for both of these tools. You wanna to get at least 20 photos because of the mistake that I made was too many of mine were in the same clothes. So I basically saw the same shirt, the same jacket in each photo because I think the model assumed that that code, that dress was me and therefore it tried to put them into every situation even when it didn't make sense. Like see this hiking one? I wouldn't wear that if I was hiking. I wouldn't go hiking, not the point. Or mountain biking, would go mountain biking, but wouldn't wear this, right? It's like I'm wearing a suit going mountain biking. It doesn't make sense, but it didn't know that, right? So in the comments, 
I'm gonna write some details around how the outputs varied with the different input photos. But basically the takeaway here is just match the style you want as an output. If you want a bit of everything, provide a bit of everything in the photos. If you just want headshots, just upload headshots. So I'm gonna to start to show you the great ones now. So here we go. In the comments, tell me which ones you think are the best. Follow the links in the description below to the tools that I used. Sign up to either of them, whichever one you like. Um, and here are these best photos. And stick around to watch another video. This time, maybe more than just photos, but maybe about videos or audio or something else that AI can be fantastic at. So here you go. So ultimately, am I gonna be using these for LinkedIn? Yeah, I will. I will be using them.